Let's bring in RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel. She joins us right now. Ronna, good morning to you. Good morning. So what do you make of what's uh, happened? Well, I said this yesterday, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And what you have right now is an unchecked Democrat Party. I think most Americans right now are horrified. If this can happen to a former president of the United States, what can they do to an average American, especially with these 87,000 new IRS agents that they're unleashing on the American public? But this is unprecedented. It's deeply concerning. Uh, and, and to see this being done through the Presidential Archives Act is is such an overreach. And it's it's just a long history of what this government's done to Donald Trump. Remember, they took a FISA warrant out to spy on his campaign. And now we're watching the FBI raid the former president's home. I guess the question is, Rana, what are you guys going to do? Because it seems like the mission right now is to stop your candidate from running. He's the number one on your ticket right now. So if this is the overall goal, what will be the response from the party? Well, the first thing we have to do, Lawrence, is win it back in 2022. We have to win back the House. You saw Kevin McCarthy's very strong statement yesterday, and we have to take the reins of power back. The only way we can stop them is by winning back the House and the Senate. We're four seats away on the House, one seat away from the Senate. And I will say this, the Democrats have had a huge fundraising advantage on the Senate candidates. So anybody listening, you've got to engage in a campaign. You've got to help donate to people like J.D. Vance and Herschel Walker and Adam Laxalt and Mehmet Oz. Uh, and candidates across the country that are going to need our help so that we can get to the finish line and finally put checks on this power. President Trump is right when he compared this to Watergate. This is the government using an agency to spy on a potential opponent's campaign. And this is truly frightening, and it is not what our democracy stands for. I know you've talked about winning back the House and the Senate in November. Today is primary day in four different states, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Vermont, and Connecticut. What should we be looking for? How important are these races today? Well, Wisconsin is key to not just the Senate. We have a governor's race there. We have a hotly contested governor's race there on the Republican side. These late primaries, I love getting them done with, so then we can start focusing on how we're going to beat Tony Evers. And then Ron Johnson is one of the top targets for Democrats. He's going to get his opponent today, Medella Barnes. And this is going to shape what we need to do for November to keep the Senate. We have seven seats we need to, or to win back the Senate. We have seven seats we need to hold, and we need to win back one, and four seats in the House that we need to win to take back majority and fire Nancy Pelosi. When are we finished with the primaries? September. We have New Hampshire in September. Um, incumbents love late primaries, so um, they do this. So you're spending more time in the primary and less money uh, to have for the general when you go against an incumbent. And it, it puts us in a position in some of these states where our candidates really have to regroup and win. But we have great candidates against Maggie Hassan in New Hampshire in September. We have primaries next week in Alaska. And the field that's shaping up is the field that's going to turn this country around and finally check the unchecked powers of the Democrats right now. It's truly frightening. I think a lot of Americans right now, you guys, are afraid. I talked to many people last night. They said, if they're doing this to Donald Trump, what are they going to do when they have a stadium full of IRS agents coming after us after they tried to do the ministry of truth? They're going to cancel people or destroy people's lives who disagree with them. And it is really a scary time in our country. Ron, real quickly, uh, before you go, you mentioned uh, Donald Trump, uh, and also you, you want to retake the House. We had uh, Newt Gingrich on yesterday, and he said he hopes that the former president, if he's going to run, does not announce before the midterms. Would it be helpful or unhelpful from the RNC point of view for him to announce before the midterms? You know, in my mind, and I've been saying this everywhere, you don't talk about the Super Bowl till you win the playoffs, right? The Detroit Lions never make it to the Super Bowl, but I'm going to use that analogy <laughs> anyway. Um, you don't talk about the Super Bowl till you win the playoffs. And we really do have to win back the House and the Senate. And I don't like talking about the presidential race at all. So I would say to any candidate, let's not skip over what is going to be one of the most important and consequential midterms in our country's history. And we need to get behind these House candidates and these Senate candidates and make sure we win in November. Well, uh, no, so November is the Super Bowl, but in the meantime, yeah. we've got a playoff day in four states today. <laughs> She's like, yeah, but Ronna, this is your job. You do this for a living. You're like, can I, I just know. get through the primaries, please? <laughs> <laughs> just let me win the primary. Have to be so Let's not talk about for you. I know. Yeah. There you go. All Ronna right. McDonald, uh, making the case for what Republicans would do when they get uh, power back. Thanks so much for joining the program. Thanks, Thanks guys. Ron. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.